Okay, so let's get to it. NSE is activated with the S uppercase C option or script if you wish to specify a custom set of scripts. Script scanning is normally done in combination with a port scan because scripts may be run or not run depending on the port states found by the scan. You can use S uppercase C to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts. It is equivalent to script equals default. Now, wait a second. Now, what is this default? Well, it is one of the categories of Nmap scripts. Let me show you. Nmap scripting engine, NSC scripts, define a list of categories that they belong to. So currently defined categories are auth, broadcast, brute, default, discovery, DOS, exploit, external, fuzzer, intrusive, malware, safe, version, and vuln. Category names are not case sensitive. So let's give you a little detail. Default scripts are the default set and are run when using the S uppercase C rather than listing scripts with script. This category can also be specified explicitly like any other using script equals default. Auth scripts deal with authentication credentials or coincidentally bypassing them on the target system. Examples include Oracle enum users. Brute scripts use brute force attacks to guess authentication credentials of a remote server. Nmap contains scripts for brute forcing dozens of protocols, including HTTP, brute, Oracle brute, SNMP brute, etc. DOS scripts may cause a denial of service. Sometimes this is done to test vulnerability to a denial of service method, but more commonly, it's an undesired by necessary side effect of testing for a traditional vulnerability. These tests sometimes crash vulnerable services. Exploit scripts aim to actively exploit some vulnerability. Examples include HTTP shell shock. Now, scripts which weren't designed to crash services use large amounts of network bandwidth or other resources or exploit security holes that are usually categorized as safe. Intrusive scripts are those that cannot be classified in the safe category because the risks are just too high that they're going to crash the target system, use up significant resources on the target host, such as bandwidth or CPU time, or otherwise be perceived as malicious by the target system administrators. Malware scripts test whether the target platform is infected by malware or backdoors. Version scripts are an extension to the version detection feature and cannot be selected explicitly. They're selected to run only if version detection, that's S uppercase V, was requested. And vuln scripts Check for specific known vulnerabilities and generally only report results if they're found. You can alternatively use script parameter to run a script scan using the comma-separated list of file names, script categories, and directories. Each element in the list may also be a Boolean expression describing a more complex set of scripts. For example, if you use script parameter using the default and safe expression. The scripts, which are in both default and safe categories, run. That makes sense. Script Update DB option updates the script database found in script slash script.db, which is used by Nmap to determine the available default scripts and categories. It's only necessary to update the database if you have added or removed NSE scripts from the default scripts directory, or if you have changed the categories of any script. This option is used by itself without arguments. Okay, so let's see some of these scripts and try to use them. Open a terminal screen in Kali. To find out the scripts, use the locate Linux command. Since the file extension of nmap scripts r.nse, type locate asterisk dot nse and hit enter. It'll locate the files which end with dot nse. This is where the nmap scripts are located in Kali by default. Go to the folder using the cd command. I select the path and press the middle button of my mouse to copy and paste it and hit enter. 
Now let's look at the script.db file first, which is a script database used by Nmap. It's in this folder. I use less command to look at the content of the file. Every row contains a script file name and its categories. So now we can see the usage of Nmap scripts. I want to try SSH scripts on my Metasploitable VM. First, with the help of Linux grep command once again, I want to list the SSH script. Here are the scripts that have the SSH word in their names. To analyze the content of a script, I use less command. Now let's look at a file, for example, ssh hostkey.nse. The script file has a description, a usage section, and many more lines. I want to show you the category section of the script. In the less command, you can use a slash key to search a word. Press slash, type kate, and hit enter. Here it found kate in the word duplicate. This is not what we're looking for. So press the N key to find the next Kate word. Again, duplicate. Press N once again. And we found the category section. Alternatively, you can use the script help nmap parameter to get help about an nmap script. Type nmap script help and then the script name. File extension is optional here. It's okay if you don't use the extension. Now here's the brief summary of the SSH host key script. Script name, a link to learn more about it, and the description of the script. Now look at the description of the SSH host key script. It shows the target SSH server's key fingerprint, and with high enough verbosity level, the public key itself. Now let's run a few nmap commands and use some scripts. Prepare the nmap command tcp syn scan. Don't forget to define the port of your interest. First, I want to run the default SSH scripts using the S uppercase C parameter. SSH host key is the default script for SSH servers. And here are the target SSH servers key fingerprints. In the description of the script, we saw that if the verbosity level is high enough, the script will show the public key itself. To see it, I want to run the nmap command again, but this time, I use the triple V to increase the verbosity level. Now we have the public keys as well as the fingerprints.